Once upon a time, on YouTube, there was a young woman who reminds me of the Goose Girl. She'd grown to be somewhat popular, and with good reason. When she opened her window, she gave her audience culture, art, history, and the sort of philosophical questions that urged others to examine their deepest innermost selves. She inspired others to open their windows as well as their minds, and for a while there were meaningful conversations which are all too rare in this particular part of YouTube. Those who got to know the young woman usually liked her, and even those who arrived determined to dislike her would find themselves unwittingly charmed. Her window on YouTube came to represent education, the defense of those unprepared to defend themselves, and many of the freedoms valued by the netizens of YouTube. She made a goal to encourage the best in those who watched her, and she'd just begun to succeed. But on YouTube, there are those who would seek to influence others for selfish reasons, instead of inspiring. There are those who would manipulate. Rather than gaining popularity through kindness, there are those who would gain it through guilt and lies. There was an old hag who was just such a person, and unfortunately, the young woman caught her eye. A person like this particular vile old hag does not look upon a person like the kind young woman with gratitude, but with envy. The most dangerous of the dark emotions. Envy infects the small-minded and whispers into the ear of its host. Look. That should be yours, and if you cannot have it, well, no one should. This hag certainly heard that whisper, and set forth to gain what she had never earned, the young woman's reputation. She allied herself with the young woman, and for a while hid her inadequacies behind the younger woman's good name. If that had been enough for the hag, the story may have ended differently, but the hag had envy in her heart, and envy isn't satisfied until it has consumed or destroyed. The hag watched the young woman, learned her, and eventually succeeded in gaining the young woman's trust. Then one day, while the windows were shut, and behind closed doors, the hag attacked the young woman, broke her heart and silenced her with a threat. As could be expected, the young woman's silence was noted. People watched the young woman's window, waiting for it to open, waiting for a word from the young woman, anything. Everyone knew that the hag and young woman had been friends. There were whispers that there had been problems. So the hag stationed herself just outside of the young woman's window front and center in the spotlight that once belonged to her young nemesis. With silence from her young opponent, the hag was free to exercise her only discernible talent. The hag, you see, had the stomach for war. There are lies that most people would be unwilling to tell. There are extreme measures that most would be unwilling to take. The hag had no such qualms. She had a most impressive skill for hiding the vile things she said and did behind a sweet old woman's smile. Those who came to fall under her influence never even realized that her actions and her words stirred up the very worst and most disgusting of human behaviors in them. They became her mob. Companions of the young woman were furious. They wanted to defend their friend. She had to convince them to remain silent as well. She watched brokenhearted as a philosophy and art once discussed by her audience gave to hate, slander, and ridicule. People the young woman had once helped began to belittle her character, and those who didn't join in smearing her said nothing to defend her. But most painful, perhaps, was knowing that the hag was emulating a twisted, cheap version of what the young woman had stood for, and people seemed to accept it as real. It seemed for a while that the hag had successfully replaced that which she had envied. But 
the hag had incited a feeding frenzy. First, it was easy to sustain. She would feed her hateful mob a piece of her target's character, her work, her personality. But envy and hate burns through and exhausts its father with ten times the speed of admiration and one hundred times the speed of gratitude. Soon, the hag had nothing but lies to feed her mob, and when they burned through that, she had nothing but the secrets that she used to silence her target. The silence which had been so helpful in the beginning of the campaign of hate and ridicule was becoming the bane that will kill it. The hag had a choice of either moving on or using the only weapon she had left. As most everyone knows, Envy isn't satisfied with the half-destruction of its target. Only utter annihilation will do. The hag fed her mob a bundle of lies, but at its center there was a secret. A secret that would hurt her young target more than anything the hag had done to that point. Finally, the young woman did open her window. She begged the hag not to spread the secret any further. She begged to have the information pulled back. This only incited the hag to gleefully spread the information so far and wide it seemed that she was on a mission to share the young woman's secret with the world. Soon the young woman was left with no choice. She shut her window and left the land of YouTube. It could have been a victory, but the spotlight that it once belonged to the young woman still shone on the hag. Before she left, even in her silence, the young woman's gratitude radiated warmth and compassion when the spotlight shone on it. But there was no gratitude in the hag's heart, only empty. And envy, even under the warmest and most flattering of light, is revealed to be small and cold and ugly. The hag was the only subject under the particularly merciless light which seemed to be so kind to the younger woman. People began to notice how little the hag had to offer, how small and unoriginal she truly was. The attention the hag had fought so hard to gain became a burden. It was nearly impossible to hide her many flaws. She attempted to create distractions and tried to give the community a reason to want to pity her again. A reason to give her some semblance of love. But by then, she had shown herself to be quite capable of defending herself. She would allowed her mask to slip one time too many, and enough people had glimpsed the ugliness behind it. She became driven, dedicated to convincing everyone that the young woman was truly malicious. Even those who did believe her simply didn't care enough to join her campaign against an unoccupied window. Even today, long after the young woman's departure, the hag continues to throw stones at and ridicule the closed window. She tries to convince anyone who would listen that the young woman is hiding behind the window, and that this young woman is paranoid and she's manipulative and spiteful. But anyone who bothers to investigate finds that the window is silent and that it had been for quite some time, and the only attacker to be seen is the hag's own reflection. Those who took the time to investigate couldn't help but to agree with the hag in that the woman in the window was hateful, manipulative, and deserving of only scorn and ridicule. The young woman hasn't returned yet, but her window is still there. Maybe someday the hag will find something better to do with her time. Something other than to stand outside of an empty window raving at her own reflection. Then maybe, just maybe, the young woman may return and open her window once again. The end.